Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at the last IB model to illustrate inflation. We've looked at demand pull inflation as applied to the monetarist and the Keynesian model, and now we're going to look at cost push inflation. The applied example is a common example I've used before to illustrate supply shocks. This is a classic kind of case study on a supply shock, the 1973 oil crisis. And here we had uh, a colluding um, cartel, countries that exported uh, petroleum, working together to restrict the supply of oil uh, to, uh, to punish those nations that they perceived as supporting Israel during the Yom Kippur War. And that reduction in the supply of oil led to a 300% increase in its price from $3 a barrel to $12 a barrel, which we can see in this graph here. Again, 1973, we see that sudden uh, increase in the price of oil. That was a, uh, a great example of a supply shock. Now, in the uh, modern industrial economy, petroleum is a input um, in almost everything that we consume um, almost anything that we consume. Um, goods and services, they might be produced without the use of petroleum, but it's transported on trucks, cargo ships, um, airplanes, uh, and thus, um, you know, any any change to the price of oil will have an immediate impact on the global economy. And this was a very uh, dire situation in the 1970s when the price of oil really shot up. It, it really damaged a lot of developed nations' economies, um, and heavily damaged developing nations' economies. But that's another, another story. Um, a more recent example of a supply shock is uh, the, COVID, um, the COVID pandemic. Uh, when countries start to deal with it um, in the early part of 2020, uh, it really disrupted the supply chain. Right? Supply chains were disrupted so, for example, perhaps you had um, companies that were manufacturing their goods in China. And uh, in March, April, May, there were many factories in China that shut down. And if those factories weren't producing inputs, right, these factories were either producing some type of needed input or output. And if these factories were shutting down, uh, to protect their workers from COVID, that was an immediate disruption to the supply chain, the global supply chain. That's also another example of the short and aggregate supply shifting in as a result of the inability of factories to produce. So the supply of inputs and outputs were, were falling. But we're going to use this historical example of the 1973 oil crisis. Okay. So here we have... Uh, the intersection of 81 SRS1 LRS, that's point A. You can make a note where 81 is equal to the short run aggregate supply curve 1, which is equal to the long run aggregate supply curve that provides an equilibrium price level at PL1. And we're going to assume that perhaps uh, we have a moderate level of inflation at about 2%. And then we have real GDP at full potential at YP, and we're fully employing our resources. So perhaps this is the US economy and the US uh, long run average level of, of unemployment is at 5%. So the US economy is doing quite well, okay? Then in 1973, OPEC nations collude to restrict the supply. So the global supply of petroleum is reduced. And thus, since petroleum is a key input in almost every aspect of the modern industrial economy, um, the aggregate supply curve for so many inputs and outputs were shifting in. So here we have 81 shifting in to 82, SRAS2, and the intersection of SRES2 with aggregate demand 1 provides a new equilibrium at point B. 
And there we see that real GDP is decreasing from YP to Y recession. Call that Y recession one. And we also see that the price level or inflation is rising due to the rise in the price of petroleum that will cause the majority of inputs and output prices to also rise as they need uh, petroleum to distribute um, those inputs and outputs. So price level rises and perhaps we get an excessive level of inflation. Maybe it's going up to about 10%. Goods and services on average rising by 10%. Output falling. And as the economy falls into recession, SRS shifts in, there's a decrease in the quantity of aggregate demand from point A to point B as a result of the rising price level. Price level rising from PL1 to PL2 reduces the quantity of aggregate demand. Households can't afford those higher prices with their, we're going to assume their fixed level of wealth. And so unemployment goes up to, let's say, 10%. So here we get a recessionary gap. Okay, we're getting a recessionary gap and inflation at the same time. Okay, recessionary gap has increased and we're getting inflation. Inflation's rising. And um, when this happened in, 19, in the 1970s, this supply shock pretty much broke the Keynesian economic model. The Keynesian model was the dominant model in the 1950s and 60s, but then in the uh, 70s, because of this SRS curve shifting in, the Keynesian model can account for how you get an increase in inflation and a decrease in output at the same time. That was considered impossible in the Keynesian uh, model. So this supply shock brought back the relevance of the Montrose model because the Montrose model assumes that the SRS curve can shift. And because it was shifting in, it made the Montrose model valid. Again, so both the monetarist and the Keynesian model have their applications uh, depending on the context. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a um, paper exam for the IB. As can be seen, we have a graph, graph A, illustrating the concept of cost push inflation. We will apply the example of a supply shock to demonstrate this. On the x-axis, we're measuring real GDP. On the y-axis, we're measuring the price level. We have a perfectly inelastic long run aggregate supply curve labeled LRES. We have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve labeled AD1, and an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve labeled SRS1. Where AD1 equals SRS1 equals LRES, we have an equilibrium price level at PL1. We're going to assume that we have about 2% inflation in this domestic economy. Real GDP is at full potential GDP, so we've achieved full employment, and we'll assume that the long run le uh, average level of unemployment is at 5%. Um, yep, and uh, as a result of the 1973 OPEC uh, reduction in the global supply of petroleum, it reduces the SRAS curve from SRAS1 to SRAS2. That establishes a new equilibrium at SRAS2 equals 81 increasing the price level from PL1 to PL2. So perhaps inflation is rising from 2 to 10%. In addition, it also decreases real GDP from full potential, YP, to Y recession 1. And we see an increase in unemployment from 5 to 10%. That increase in the price level from PL1 to PL2 reduces the quantity of aggregate demand along the 80 curve from point A to point B. So as uh, consumers uh, decrease the quantity of the aggregate demand, firms will begin to fire excess resources, um, and that leads to the increase in unemployment. So this illustrates how SRAS shifting inwards causes inflation, thus cost push inflation, where we get inflation and a recessionary gap with cyclical unemployment at the same time. And that's it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and to comment if you have any questions.